Hey guys, welcome back to Disrupt It Yourself. Of course, I'm Andrew, who else would it be? I wanted to make a quick video with you guys today and it's kind of a little bit more of an informal setting. My Instagram content is getting more formal and some of my YouTube content is becoming a little less formal. I hope you guys are okay with that. But anyway, today I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about something I posted on Instagram. Um, I actually posted this a few days ago, five days ago. And I asked my friends, a bunch of you who follow me there, what you thought of the Digilab 3D45, but specifically, if you definitely don't want the 3D printer and you're beyond convincing, I wanted you to tell me why you're not interested. Now, I don't expect to be able to convince everyone who doesn't want this printer that they should get it, because I think there's a lot of people who shouldn't probably, because there's no product that's right for everyone. But I do think there's probably a little gap in between of people who don't want it for the wrong reasons and they'd probably be surprised how much value they can get out of this. So before I jump into the questions, or I should say the complaints, the reasons that you guys aren't interested, I wanted to go ahead and preface it just a tiny bit. I think there's a lot of you who would be interested in this 3D printer if you already have another 3D printer. And let me explain, I think there's a whole group of people who would probably be fine just with the Digilab 3045 but people like me are probably more satisfied with it if they also had something like the Prusa or the CR10 or any number of other 3D printers. And the reason is, if you're complaining about things like not being able to use third-party filament, which you probably can if you really want to, but if that's an issue for you and you already have another 3D printer, then you'll be able to print that stuff on your other machine. But the things that those machines aren't great with, like big ABS prints or nylon in general, they'll be amazing on the 3D45. So that means you'll have the best of both worlds, and that's, I think, why I'm so satisfied with this 3D printer, because it filled a gap in my office, in my workshop, of things that I couldn't produce well, which are those high-temperature materials. I mean, small parts, sure. On any of these machines, I could print fairly small parts in any of those materials, and they'd be great. But I've just had such heartache over printing high-temperature materials on some other machines. So super quick, I don't want this to be a long video, Let's run through some of these. We had a bunch of people talk about proprietary filament. Um, Brady Hoover, Brady Hoover Designs on Instagram, made that comment, proprietary filament. Almost everyone does. I won't go over that too much because we've talked about it, but as I was saying, you probably could use third-party filament on the Digilab 3045 if you were okay with voiding the warranty. You would just have to make sure that you could get replacement parts out of pocket, like without the warranty, like if they would just let you buy nozzles or whatever ex extruder parts in the worst case scenario that you actually bust something. Also, um, JDM Lewis said same as to the proprietary filament and the cost is above my desired price point. The machines built with their own enclosures are always going to be more expensive. Great point. Pseudomod Wormy also echoed the proprietary filament, but also the lack of meaningful community support that are big issues for him. Now let me just say something really quick. You're right, there isn't a huge community around this 3D printer. In fact, there's very few people that are really in kind of that community mindset with it. I think a lot of the initial customers, and remember, this came out pretty recently, they're teachers or they're working in kind of a bubble. They're not part of this greater 3D printing ecosystem where we all share and communicate a lot. There's just not a lot of those people that are in this world. But the only solution to that is that more people buy the 3D printer. More people with real 3D printing experience get into the game. So you can't really have one before the other. And 3D Printing 101 mentioned proprietary filament. He says it's expensive. We've talked about those. And he says small build volume. Um, this is a minor concern and it is valid. So let's validate it. It could be a little bit bigger. I'm hoping the 3D50, not that they've announced it, but 40, 45, right? I'm hoping the 3D50 is a lot bigger. I personally feel like it's big enough, probably 90% of the time. Sometimes you will have that one thing where you're like, oh darn, I wish I could print something a little bit bigger. But it's all right. I think it's, like I said, for about 90% of the time, it's just right. So I'll validate that's a legitimate issue, but I don't think a deal breaker. But again, that could depend on what you're doing with it. Tinkernote said the price of the machine is out of my range at the moment. The small community support is a turn off as well since I'm new to this stuff. The one caveat there, and I was going to bring this up later, but their support on the side of Dremel is actually awesome. So in the meantime, as the community hopefully grows, you can at least count on Dremel to give you good support. I've even called them and they had no idea who I was or what the, the fact that I was part of their testing program and they still helped me super well. They were awesome to work with. 
Andrew B16 said mainly cost and maintenance. Mm. Andrew B16 said mainly cost and maintenance of the 3D printers. I don't really think you're very likely to do maintenance on this 3D printer unless you really manage to break it. We'll see, maybe after a year I'll be able to comment on that better. Sky Castle Customs is already a Dremel customer. They have the 3D20 and 3040. Um, not the 3D45 yet, but I think they're crazy if they don't go out and grab one because it's such a great machine. They said, well, they say proprietary filament. That never stopped me from running everything through it. Love the way wood PLA prints from it. It's flawless. Biggest upset, biggest upset is build height. That's it. I never had to worry about a print messing up or any of that unless it was something I overlooked. I love this printer's reliability from a business standpoint. It's crucial. So definitely super reliable 3D printer. Sounds like they're using their 3D20 and 3D40 with third party filament. And again, like as long as you're okay with losing the warranty, which most of us are kind of warranty voiders, right? As makers, then that's your prerogative. Lastly, Warwick 3D said price and build size. Um, those are two points that have already been brought up. So we won't go into that too far. All right guys, sorry, just one last comment from changed my handle. His name is actually Mike Brown. So thank you, Mike. He said, why I haven't considered one or haven't bothered to even consider reading up on them? Cynical. This is his, these are his words. But I unfairly assume that since they're such a big name and it's such a small part of their portfolio that it is just a passing fad that what I'm buying is someone else's machine wrapped in Dremel's IP. I think he said ID, I think he meant IP. And I'll end up with a walled garden of a 3D printer that they aren't guaranteed to support for a long time because their bread and butter is consumable attachments for their handhelds. Now, if they made, say, a CNC platform that put a variety of heads on, Dremel name would be much, would be more and more powerful draw. Anyway, to paraphrase, what he's saying is he doesn't feel like Dremel is really 100% in this game, that they're just trying to kind of stick their flag in the ground as well, say, yeah, we've got a 3D printer too. I totally understand that because I think that was my initial feeling about the Digilab 3D40, but I tried it and was surprised that I loved it, and that is still the case now. And let me tell you, because I've spent so much time talking to people at Dremel, not to say that I haven't ever disagreed or had my frustrations, but they are definitely super invested in this Digilab line. They've also got a laser cutter coming out, and if you go to their website, you can see that. But they're definitely in this game 100%, and they're behind it, and they care about it, and I think they're seeing this as a big part of their future business. All right, guys, sorry this video already went on a lot longer than I meant it to. I've got a lot of other stuff to work on. I've got to solder some things. I've got to work on a bunch of projects, so I've got to let you go. But keep on making awesome stuff, and have a great day. See you later.